This is the future of medicine. So imagine going into the doctor's office and getting prescribed a shot. Well, in the future, you're also going to be prescribed this. Shots of experience. I went to the VR XR medical conference in Beverly Hills, smug as fuck, right? To really showcase what is the future of medicine look like because we do have a snapshot now. It's only going to get better and better. We're gonna get into the use of XR and how it's going to change the field of medicine and be part of the future. It's just getting more and more affordable and the processing is becoming better and better. So we're gonna really get into the future of medicine and we're gonna really tackle four aspects of how it's gonna be used. First one will be about pain management. Then it was gonna be about using biofeedback for anxiety, then getting at medical training uh, along with like a uh, home care training. And then lastly, getting at phobias, particularly using AI and XR to really generate more person-centered related experiences. And then we'll do uh, a recap of this all particularly getting a little glimpse from the conference. I'm Dr. Thomas Chan, and I have been doing serious XR research since 2016. I see the power and potential in augmented and virtual reality, but there's a lot of science that needs to still be done with it. So I've gotten uh, grants from the Department of Defense, National Science Foundation, and have projects with NASA to use XR in terms of how do we promote mental health and resilience with it. And also have some projects with NASA of understanding how can we use XR to train Martian and lunar teams. The Department of Defense has spent first $400 million in prototyping HoloLens 2s for outfitting their soldiers and then spent $11 billion on this. The first thing I'm gonna get into are, is this pain management. So pain is a really tricky thing. There's actually organic parts of pain, which is like there's a pinched nerve, something is pinching, you get hurt and you have a cut, but there's also this psychological part of pain. That's why they ask you when you go into the ER, they triage you from a scale of one to 10, how much does it hurt or how much are you in agony? Sometimes actually the psychological pain transfers to actual physical pain. So that's what makes pain really a, a tricky, complex issue, especially in medicine to treat. I tried this experience that had to do with back pain. Since the 70s and 80s, it's actually been shown for older adults that back pain and uh, arthritis and all these different types of pains that, that people feel like aches, mindfulness meditation really helps. You know, being able to literally refocus the mind on something else. So what this Relief VR was really, when I tried it, was it was a pretty chill experience, but it, it was like, I was using it, essentially I was breathing in and then blowing out, and it uses the cameras to really track what I was doing, my breath. And every time I was breathing in, there's a whole like, think about pollen coming all in at you. And then when I breathed out, it was like a shooting that pollen out toward our direction. And when I was breathing and shooting it, if I was shooting it to like a tree, it would grow. If I was shooting it toward flowers, it would grow. So what this uh, company has done is really captured mindfulness and put it into uh, a feedback, essentially in a different world. And that actually helped relieve pain, at least temporarily, right? So sometimes prescribing drugs is one way, like pharmaceuticals, like pharma, but this, in the future, it's gonna be prescribed, there's gonna be these VR 
experiences. And it's already approved, well, approved, meaning like it was cleared by the FDA, right? The Food and Drug Administration as a medicine. So you can't really get like this particular experience without an actual prescription. The reason why it works is not just because it's in VR. It's really more about like focusing on those mechanisms of conscious breathing or mindfulness. But it was a really neat medium to see and experience how they were doing it with breathing in and capturing that with the cameras and then breathing out. Speaking about biofeedback, the second area was about tackling anxiety. It's an actually an adaptive mechanism, but it's only when it crosses a threshold to uh, where it becomes a disorder. You know, when when people say it's, oh, I feel so much anxiety, they can't even function. So it's really about functioning. So when people get like test anxiety, it means that they, they get so worried and, and uh, essentially arousal levels go so high that they're not able to perform. But normal anxiety, like, is a healthy amount of anxiety literally increases performance because there's a increase in arousal energies and activities. So just to put that into context, more than 50% of Gen Z is diagnosed with some type of anxiety disorder. It's crazy, right? So this is a really big medical issue, anxiety, and try to tackle that. So it uses actually, I put, as you can see, I put on a heart rate monitor with the Apple Watch and that was dictating my experience in terms of I was, same thing, I was like in transported to these different worlds and it was tracking like my heart rate. And if I was calmer, the, the, the circles and the orbs around me would turn a different color, like green and blue. So I was like doing this and it could track everything. And it was using the heart rate to really track and, and give me feedback of how I was feeling. Uh, they are they're getting at a couple of things. They're getting this experience of awe, right? To get my mind off of whatever, I guess, targeting whatever provides people anxiety. Uh, there was like this relaxing, right? Essentially they were playing music and all these other things in the headsets. These headsets are spatially wired, meaning like you could see around the space around you, but it's also you hear in these different 360 spaces. So they're getting at these mechanisms and transporting people to a different realm, you know, like really giving a, a shot of awe, a shot of relaxation, to really get people out of this anxiety disorder. Think about this as an over-the-counter kind of thing, just like Advil or Tylenol's over-the-counter. Some Something to combat anxiety levels is really these shots of experience. Experience. And it was really cool just because it those related to my heart rate. Another fascinating area what you see in medicine is gonna be how people are trained. Beyond the training of the medical professionals, such as when I tried these experiences in terms of like you know, being able to see somebody's teeth and how they're really uh, essentially turning those images of the x-ray to sonograms into like teeth to do more education, but then also about surgery as well. You know, going into the operating room and VR being a immersive, but yet forgiving like environment instead of doing cadavers, right? You could continue uh, doing uh, surgeries and continuously having practice and practice uh, along those lines. Along with they had some soft, skills, which was really interesting to see because in medicine it's called like bedside manner and being able to deliver like good news, bad news or doing it in an appropriate way, right? To make the patients feel calmer or more understanding. So really training both in the technical part, right? Such as like surgeries and then also soft skills. So that's for the medical professionals, but they also had certain ones for patients or their families. So the cool one I experienced and saw was about the caregivers, right? And just showing 
how to care give because caregiving over 75 percent of caregivers are family members and that's a that's a really a whole new set of of learning you know how to provide care for somebody especially when they have issues with activities of daily living right uh a d l so i a d l so right? instrumental activities of daily living right these are more higher order things like paying bills uh, while uh, activities daily living, such as like going to the bathroom so that, that's a whole new skills uh, and uh, using vr to really help in that front especially given how immersive it is and the last thing that uh i saw as one of the future shots of uh, medicine was really about making things with ai plus xr to treat things such as phobias. What essentially what a, a phobia is, is the irrational fear of something that impedes functioning. So this yellow VR was really applying large language models, right? Like ChatGPT, and to make scenes of specific phobias uh, and then putting uh, something, the person in the scenes in a safe way. So essentially all what this is, is, is exposure therapy. Exposure therapy has been really validated across the years. What the amazing thing of this is it becomes more person-centered, right? And this person-centered is really important for tailoring and customization. These phobias could also extend to practice, right? Practicing being in that environment. Think about public speaking, job interviewing. I had my colleague, Dr. Henkel Lipsker, invoke his fears, being called in the dean's office, you know? And we were able to be make that and kind of that scene and just getting exposed to that fearful thing especially for professors being called to the dean's office. <laughs> so the future is going to be this tailored and centered thing. Uh, and, and people are gonna be able to be in therapy sessions. And these therapy sessions will include some type of exposure along with human guidance, right? From a therapist, right? A li licensed therapist, not a fucking life coach. They can't do shit, right? So it's gonna be about that. And when we talk about addressing phobias. As if for the conference, the future of medicine looks really, really promising for the select few. Still kind of privileged right now <laughs> in terms of like who could put on a VR headset and wants to put on a VR headset or even doctors who have the time to even do all VR research. Uh, there's a lot out there, a lot of amazing things in terms of using VR for pain management and prescribing that, uh, using it for reducing anxiety, even just like the fear of death. All right, there, there's a lot of amazing projects out there with VR and, and it's very promising right now and looking forward to more of it being implemented in the future. Uh, what we could do as psychologists is really be able to really highlight these and study these for what works and for whom and under what condition it works because not everybody wants to just put on a VR headset and and be in a different world you know if there's if they fear uncertainty or anxiety you know, or have anxiety about uncertainty but we really need to just figure out for whom and under what conditions these work because since the 80s they said vr is going to change everything vr is going to change anything and the 90s happened and 2000s happened that didn't really happen but now we're starting to see it being really implemented in terms of engaging these well-known psychological mechanism. Well, the future of medicine looks really promising in terms of having these shots of experience. And these shots of experience are not just gonna happen by needles. They're gonna be, boom, put in your eyes and your face. So, sounds dirty, but that's what's gonna happen. That's the future of medicine, you know, especially as these form factors start to shrink down and shrink down. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you next time. Peace. This is the police.